Hey, this is Bill Kelleher, guitarist for the band Mastodon. My name is Brent and I'm from Mastodon. I'm here today to pick my 11 heaviest Mastodon riffs. So we can talk about it. Number 11 is Crusher Destroyer. <laughs> It just came to me one day early on. I think it was the uh, first song off Remission. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I really do. I, I, I remember there was a band in our in our town in, in Atlanta called Crusher Destroyer. So we just named our, our song after, I guess, after their band. We liked their band name so much. It's a very simple pattern, three chords. It just had a lot of energy. I don't know, it just sounded, it just sounded really heavy, those three riffs together, I guess. Punk, dude. Thrash. Grind. Heavy music. Hashtag. Okay, riff number 10. This is from Hand of Stone. This is at the ending. Very last riff. And the reason I picked that one, uh, it just reminded me of a Slayer riff. Yeah, it kind of sounds Slayer-ish, or however you, you know. Yeah, it's, it's homage to the, to those guys. It's very very uh, chugga chugga, galloping on the E, very Slayer-ish, and you know I love Slayer, so what's heavier than that? All right, this is riff number nine. End of uh, Pain with an Anchor. Pretty heavy chuggy riff. <laughs> Got the uh, John Atabata, New Jersey chord, so we call it. Yeah, total Atabata riff. It even gets down on the ground like Atabata, Bill does that now. Total Atabata homage. Also, I mean that chord, everything you play with that chord sounds heavy. Number eight heaviest riff from Mastodon. This is uh, from Sea Beast. Again, ending riff. That's usually where all the heavy riffs end up is at the end of the song for the mosh pit, you know what I'm saying? Okay, goes like this. However that goes. Yeah, that, that's a that's a banger. That one hits. It's good. It's the way Braun brings it in on the drums. It's like feels heavier, you know? This is from Blood and Thunder. This is the very last riff again. <laughs> Last riff, man. It's like, you know, the song builds and builds and builds, and then you get to the end, and you, you want to go crazy. You want to throw your heaviest shit at the audience. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but, you know, Blood and Thunder, the song, it was, like, mostly written by Braun, almost the whole thing. I think, you know, by the time we got to the end of the song, we needed something that was like a crescendo, like a just something that, you know, wraps up the song, and that's usually, let's give it our all. Let's give it our heaviest riff. In Mastodon, we do that a lot. That's a perfect example. I mean, you thought you couldn't get any heavier of Blood and Thunder, and then you get to that very last riff, and it just crushes your fucking soul. This is uh, Roots Remain off Emperor of Sand. Opening, opening riff this time.
roots remain. They do. I checked. When I was writing for Emperor Sand, that was the first riff I wrote. And naturally, after I write a riff, I say, okay, that's a sick, great riff. I gotta write something even heavier and crazier to go after it, which I really should have thought the opposite because I, I just couldn't, that one went on the back burner for many months before it came back and had a friend, as the, which is the chorus, the next part. So I just couldn't get any heavier in that song. So that's why that's number six heaviest riff. This is really in no particular heavy gauge of like heaviness or not. Um, just kind of spitting them out. This is number five, and this is Fallen Torches. I think this is, this is very heavy. Guess what, it's the last riff. It goes something like this. It's just a good ending to a great song to me. That's one of my favorite songs, favorite riffs to play. And I think uh, Braun and I were working on it. And we got to the end of Fallen Torches, the song, and, and he said, we need, we need a big crescendo at the end of this song, something super heavy. And I, I just kind of just kind of whipped it out. And it was like, oh, wow, that's cool. And you know, usually we have the rhythm of something and then I'll, I'll fill in the notes later according to like the emotion of the of the movement of the song or, or the or the riff. So, you know, it, it wasn't an instantaneous like, oh, I've got it. It's that. It's kind of like I got the rhythm. Let's add the notes now. I, yeah, I like that Sabbathy part. To me, that's heavier than the end. I don't know. It sounds real gnarly. All right, this is number four in the top 11 heaviest Macedon riffs. This is more than I can chew. <laughs> I mean, that one's really heavy. It's super heavy when you're cranking it through a very loud amp on stage in front of thousands of people. That's fucking, that's, that could be number one. It's not like they're in ranking and in, in, in riff Richter scale or anything like that. It's got a good swagger to it that just makes you want to boogie woogie all night long. All right, this is number three. This is a song called Mother Puncher. <laughs> feels pretty heavy. Again, it's a drum thing. It's like what Braun does with the drums, the way he breaks it down, makes the riff even more heavy. Even though, you know, it's just like simple little riffs. Any song called Mother Puncher, uh, that's heavy, you know? Because when our singer first heard that riff, he said, man, that riff makes me want to punch my mother. I mean, that's not, don't, don't go out and punch your mother when you listen to that. That's not cool. Never. We love our mothers. But it was just the, that's what it made it feel. So we named the song that. And that's why, you know, it's number three in my list of heavy ass Macedon riffs. Number two. We're getting to number two here. Let's see, this one is from the song Spectralite. There's a lot of heavy riffs in this song, but I think my heaviest riff is. <laughs> Just, again, it's got a good feel. It's real smooth. Uh, lots of open strings, chimey uh, G string. Chimey G string is my nickname in high school. But um, that's, we'll talk about that later. Uh, you know, we got A string ring, or it's actually the B string. The way we tune, we tune down a full step. This is tuned down to low A, so you've got that. 
Always love doing that for heavy shit. That's a good, a good thing to do. You wanna get heavy? If you're in Mastodon, that's what we do. All right, number one, circle of side squatch. The very last riff, of course, goes something like this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that circle of side squats is real heavy at the end. I mean, it's like, you know, um, it, it, whatever it does there, no demonstration. That one's heavy because it's tuned real low down to A, and we're playing these um, octave chords. There's a lot of uh, ringing dissonant chords, which kind of, you know, just throws this weird evil unknown, what note is that, what's happening right now? And on top of all that, we're throwing a few different time signatures in there with the walk up at the end of the one, two, three, one, one, two, and then it repeats. So it's like a, a three, one, two, three, one, two, until it just bashes you down into your hole where you belong. So that brings us to a close. That was 11 Heaviest Mastodon Riffs. Feel free to leave some comments below. And uh, you know, tell us what you think. If you guys have suggestions, wanna leave them in the comments below of your idea of what the heaviest or your favorite Mastodon Riffs are, feel free to do that now. And I got my personal information down there so anyone can contact me about anything that, you know, any questions. So have a nice day.